Yes, sir. Here we go. Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to discuss the week ahead preview, what happened last week, and how all of this banded together affects your money and your investments and what I personally plan to do going forward. Let's go ahead and get into it, okay? So last week, we did get the jobs report. We got the unemployment numbers, and it did cause the market to have a nasty sell-off on Friday, which wasn't really surprising. I think we talked about this all last week on the channel, and it actually ended up happening. So what happened was the U.S. created 263,000 new jobs in September. This is above the market forecast of 250,000, which shows that the labor market is still strong, which the Fed has been telling everybody. The Fed has been right on that part. Uh, unemployment rate was also the scary number that came out too, because unemployment rate actually fell. It didn't go up. <laughs> it actually fell to 3.5% from 3.7%. For those who don't know, that is really good. That is great unemployment numbers, considering the entire country is only at a 3.5% unemployment rate. Uh, uh, that's not enough uh, slowing down for the Federal Reserve to ease up on rate hikes. And that's why the market sold off, because you guys know the market is, uh, you know, the market is uh, price prices likes to price things in. And so the market's like, OK, that's not good. So that's why you saw that big sell off. Uh, it's important to remember, guys, let me pull up the CNBC article. Uh, Jerome Powell literally said that the jobs market will have to suffer in order for inflation to fall. He literally said that at one of the FOMC meetings. You can see that right here. In this uh, CNBC, in this uh, CNN article. So, when you see the fact that, and I know it makes no sense, like the economy is good, like there there's less unemployment, there's more jobs. Like, why is the market selling off? But it's because the market knows that as long as the economy remains strong, the Fed is going to continue to be aggressive because no matter how much the Fed tries to tiptoe around it and not directly say it, that's really what's happening here. The Fed is. You know, that whole soft landing thing is out the picture, guys. The Fed is going to cause a hard landing, and they are going to force a recession. And they kind of have to in order to bring down inflation. Because as far as we've seen, inflation really isn't coming down. Sure, it may have peaked. But if you're still sitting at 8% inflation, that's not good. That's still killing people, you know, financially. Now, according to Bank of America... That jobs report could lead to new 2022 lows for stocks this month. Uh, I agree with Bank of America. I don't know about this month. Again, I'm not really into the super short term predictions, but just going forward, you know, within the next few months or so, I do think I do expect the market to go lower. You know, again, I can't predict the exact time that it's going to happen this week, that week. I have no idea. But based on everything we're seeing, based on the bad news, based on everything going on in the geopolitical uh, scope, based on what the Fed is doing and how aggressive I think they're going to continue to be because they really want to bring down inflation. I'm just not bullish, guys. And keep in mind, we're still in a bear market, regardless of what these crazy people on YouTube think, these mega bulls. We are still in a bear market, and you have to recognize that, okay? Now, the CME Fed watch tool, which you guys definitely want to look at because that thing is pretty pretty spot on. Uh, the CME watch tool showed that there is now an 82.3% probability of a 75 uh, basis point rate hike. Uh, in the next uh, FOMC meeting. And this is significantly up from the 56% that they originally thought. So they originally thought that there was a 56% chance that there'd be a 75 basis point rate hike. But after that jobs report, you know, the CME watch tool was like, okay, it's not going to work. So anyway, uh, in terms of what's going on this upcoming week, it's going to be a very busy week in the US because you actually have earnings season kicking off. And this is the thing that really scares me even more so than the Fed and what's going on, you know, in Russia and Ukraine. This scares me even more because if earnings end up being very, very bad, which they very very well could be like if we end up in a legit earnings recession those some of your stocks are going to plunge you're going to you're going to see those insane 10 15 20 percent plunges like we saw you know a few months ago so just don't be surprised so what you got is you do have some bank earnings. You've got JP Morgan. You, you guys know the banks always lead off the earnings. So I believe that that's on Friday. You've got JP Morgan Chase. You've got Citibank, Wells Fargo. All the major banks are reporting. And then you also have Pepsi and you have Delta Airlines that will also be reporting as well. Now, what else do we have next week? We do have the FOMC minutes. Remember, you did have FOMC already take place. But then later on, the Fed actually releases the minutes from the meeting. So you got FOMC uh, minutes that come off. You also have CPI inflation data that is coming off. So like I said, this is going to be a very big week, probably going to be a lot of uh, volatility. And again, I have no idea what to expect with the uh, CPI data. I'm not even going to try to predict. But one thing I do believe is with oil prices going up because of what happened with OPEC, uh, I do think that the next month CPI, which remember, it's 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 a uh, it, it reflects the uh, inflation data from October. So this inflation data that we're going to get right now reflects last month's inflation numbers the ones that we're going to get in november reflects october's which is this month which is where you, have you seen gas prices lately <laughs> gas prices go up ain't good for inflation folks 
So that's what you got going on. You also have some speeches coming out from a bunch of different Federal Reserve officials. And that's important because after everything that we just saw last week regarding the jobs report, uh, it's going to be very important to see what the Fed actually thinks and how much more hawkish they start to get after seeing the fact that the labor market is still strong, right? So you also have uh, the inflation rate. You got retail sales data coming out for the month of September. You also have a bunch of numbers coming out from the UK, unemployment, industrial production, GDP uh, figures coming out from the United Kingdom. And then on top of that, you also have retail sales, which will provide us clues about the behavior uh, of the American consumer. And then on top of that, you got other uh, indicators about how the American consumer is doing. You have the uh, University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index. And uh, yeah, that's going to be important as well. So all in all, uh, there's going to be a lot more volatility. <laughs> Just like we've seen all year, you will definitely see uh, more volatility, probably more next week than normal. It's probably going to be insane the swings you're probably going to see due to just everything that's going to happen and uh yeah that's what you got you also have ppi coming out as well but anyway what exactly am i doing well you guys already know i've been very very clear on this we're not in the business of time in the market yes we know that we're in a bear market but honestly the market has plunged so much and there are some stocks that i really like that have come to prices that i really really want to buy them at that i've just been buying i haven't been losing my mind putting all my cash to work but i do think during these times it's okay to nibble it's okay to, dare I say it, dollar cost average at these prices. It's okay. Like, stocks have really come down. Now, I do think we have more downside to come, for sure. But nobody knows where the bottom is, and you don't want to get caught up in that. All I know is the market is down like 23 25%, the S&P 500, down like 23 25% from highs. We're in a bona fide, legit bear market. The NASDAQ is down even more. I feel like during these times, you just got to put your head down and buy. Ignore the noise. Ignore the foolishness. Put your head down and buy the freaking dip. Now, obviously, most of you guys know it is extremely unlikely that most of us investors will outperform perform the SP 500. Very few investors outperform the index. So if you want my honest opinion, I think the best thing that every investor can do is buy index funds. More importantly, the S&P 500 low cost index fund, ticker symbol VOO. And so there you guys have it. That'll go include today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.